I'm Chase. And I'm Timothy. And this is Customer Service. All right. Customer Service, here we go. Chase, are you okay today? I'm feeling great today. It's Friday. Me and Michelle got sushi last night. Why? What was going on last night? Why did you buy sushi on a Thursday? We, uh, we're we trying to do this thing where... So COVID enabled my behavior to where it made it feel more okay to never leave the house. So we're just trying to do dinner mm-hmm. here and there. So it was just, a, it was just a, for fun dinner. Yeah, just for fun. We went to a spot in our neighborhood really close. It was kind of sick. We had a res for 745, sit down at 715, showed up early. I mean, we ordered. Why did you show up thirty minutes early? I was hungry, bro. I didn't eat yesterday. That is that is a, that's. I mean, obviously it was fine. It must not be that busy on a Thursday, but that is psycho behavior to run up to a restaurant thirty minutes before your restaurant. You guys down to seat us, yeah. and the girl didn't skip a beat. She goes, yeah. "Yeah, I got you guys. Sit down." We placed an order. We did the whole order right up front, and I mean, no, no exaggeration. We got all of the food in under like eight minutes, and just demolished it. And then was on our way home. See, I'm actually, I'm, I, I feel like I understand, I understand where you're coming from. I want, if I'm out at a restaurant, let it take a while. Where am I going? I, I plan to just be in here for a little while. Yeah. I don't want them to bring me the food right away. I don't want the bread right away. Just give me a drink after 15 minutes. I'm fine. I'll wait. What else am I doing? I'm posted. I think there's, t- I think there's times where, where I'm down with that. Like when we had team dinner or wherever we went, uh, it wasn't team dinner actually. We just went to that place, Potage. Yeah, I liked their service. It was nice. You had a whole night. The whole stick was. It feels like it's worth rushed. Yeah, it feels like it's worth the money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To me, if you're just like in and out, sometimes I'm like, well, I mean that was good. Yeah, but I was just in it. I mean, I might as well have taken it home. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I like when you just really relax in a space for a while. Yeah. You have to go out and you go to the bathroom a bunch. You go outside and people leave to have cigarettes. Yeah. And come back. I I like the idea of leaving and coming back. We walked in. And there was some kid in in uh, like a like a Zara kind of outfit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Smoking a cig. And when we left, the same kid was still standing. Like it was as if he had. I don't think he ever went back into the restaurant. I think that he was that's just what outside he was doing in his evening. shark yeah. skin suit. Yeah, blasting squares. Yeah, yeah. It was just like you know, it was a Zara fit. Well, it's all good, but it was like like tight. You know what I'm saying? Look, I bet guys in Zara clothes get more girls than I ever got. Yeah, it's the reality. <laughs> Maybe you know. So what do you want to talk about today? Well, a couple things we could talk about. We could talk about. We've been getting a lot of new product. I had a prompt that I that I wanted to ask you. It came to me last night. Okay, we've got prompt a lot away. of new product. But I mean, yeah. So you know, before we get into the whole canoe club aspect of everything, um, that Whitney song, that band Whitney, yeah, uh, Chicago they, Boys, they put out a song that you and I had found on YouTube. What feels like two or three years ago, and. We, we were waiting for it, waiting for it. Every release that came out after that YouTube video, the song was never on it. The song finally released, which then got me thinking, you know what? I don't give it enough credit, but Light Upon the Lake is a perfect record front to back. Yeah, it was that it was that video we saw. It was like a live video from like Uruguay or something. I was, yeah, like, I was going to yeah. say like Brussels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That might have been it, yeah. But... But uh, so it got me thinking. That's a perfect record, and I wanted to ask you a question. Yeah, I mean, I think that that specific one from them is a f- soup to nuts, really good record. Like no, no skippable songs. Nope. Yeah. Everything is memorable, catchy, perfect. It's a perfect record. Yeah. My question to you is: Can you name like th- I'm not saying your three favorite records. I'm th- saying like yeah. you think back. What's our, what are three perfect records to you? Where sure. you're like that they nailed it. I think that that's a distinguishing thing. You have to like decide that there's. It's coming. People ask about like your favorite movie. I'm like, well, let me ask you a question. Are you asking what do I think are the best movies? What are my favorite movies? Or what are like the most rewatchable movies? Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's like there's three buckets to me, and you're yeah. kind of asking, I believe, like what is the most rewatchable? Like what is the one that like? It's not about whether it's your favorite. It's not about whether you think it's the best. It's like what have you like? What do you think is like a record where you don't skip any songs? Repeat, repeat. You're just repeat. like, damn, they nailed the concept. Yeah, love it. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a few. Did you have something that came to mind right away? I feel, I, I, I feel like I, I know you've got yours. Right I've away. already got it, but I already named it. I think Light Upon Lake well, here, is I, a perfect record. But gonna, can I, I can guess one, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Should I guess it or do you just want to say you it? Can, you can guess both of them. Okay, well, it's got to be the microphones. The microphones yeah. blow part two. Um, maybe I don't know the second one for you. Uh, a Life Less Plagued, Carry On. Oh, yeah. Early 2000s, straight edge. Why hardcore. is that? Like, why is that specific? I think, you know, because I think a lot of like, 
hardcore and stuff is kind of interesting because I there are definitely albums I know front to back really, really well. Yeah. A lot of the times they kind of sound very similar. Like uh, Carry On, I guess, is, a, is an example where there was a lot more like melody to what they do. Yeah, yeah. Or like, you like know, you, yeah, emotion. Okay. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah, melodic. It wasn't, it was, just punk. wasn't straightforward, like beat down hardcore. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, I mean, Youth Crew. It was Youth Crew. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah, Straight yeah. Edge. It was Southern California It was a little more edge. earnest than other stuff, I guess. Definitely. Is, is how Definitely. I view it. That specific stuff. Yeah. Because it's like, I like to, you know, I love like integrity and cursed and all that shit. But it's like, I don't know that there's any records there where I'm like, I know them front to back really well. But do I think they're a perfect record? No. No, no. And see, that's the distinguishing thing, you know? I mean, Glow Part 2, I understand. That is a, it doesn't, I don't think there's any reason. I, in fact, I don't think you should skip any songs because it's kind of trying to tell one full story. It's the whole point. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. So I totally get that one. And carry on, I do understand. Like, there's like, there's just albums from hardcore bands that I just sort of just have like had a different yeah impact. There, yeah. I think there's also a little bit of a nostalgia tied to that too. Which, yes. as I'm thinking of them, like there's a lot of nostalgia, 100 tied to a lot. I of would this. say that's the majority of for for the a life less plagued record for me. It was, I think it was the first CD I burned when I got my first car. Yeah. So while I was driving, trying to learn how to drive stick in my neighborhood and just sucking. I would just rinse I that have, endlessly. I had, I had because we because I, I had a CD player and that's all we had. Yeah. It was like I have specific records that I know front to back so well and it's exclusively because it was in my car. Like yeah. someone I was never like a huge Blood Brothers fan, but someone had left the one with crimes on it in my in my car and for a while there it was just like one of two albums I had. Yeah. And it just got played a lot because I wasn't going to listen to the radio. Yeah. So I know that's that album front to back. Uh huh. I'm not telling you I like it. It's just. But you know it. I know it yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. well. Yeah. I, it was. It was. It was a lot. It was about like, you know, Spotify didn't exist back then and shit. And I eventually, in my 2001 uh, teal blue Nissan Sentra, did get from Geek Squad Best Buy. I did get a little iPod setup. You know what I mean. But even then, it's that was CD. rare back in the day, though. Yeah, yeah. to have that. You get in a car and and you, you know, somebody you hadn't ridden with, and you're like, oh shit, you got no. You got here, a- here's what I had. I don't know if you're gonna remember this. It was the attachment that went into the iPod that you had to like turn to the radio station. It was yes, like a dead yes, radio station. Never worked. And you'd have to like hold it. I'd I'd be driving with one hand <laughs> holding it in a specific way so it didn't break up. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Just trying to listen. To, you know. Uh huh. Listen thing- to a Lamb of God album for the hundredth time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot. It was, but but I remember it very. I remember like I could if I was in my. 2001 Chevy Cavalier. I could I could show you like where I needed to hold it so it would it would connect. What color was your Cavalier? Black. And the thing is about that car, and I've seen other cars since the same situation. It got what I called acne. For some reason, I think like the sun just like ripped this paint apart at some point, and but it was only on the hood. Yeah. And if you if you park it next to any other one, black specifically, the hood looks the exact same. It looked disgusting. It I'm looked not, like I had. I'm pops. not I'm not just saying this because. It'll be witnessed via pod. Mm-hmm. When you said a 2001 Chevy Cavalier, I wanted to know what color because I wanted to envision how it looks with the paint fucked up because yeah. I've never seen one not fucked no, up. No, they all have that. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, I really think that that was just a flaw of vehicles back then because that was happening on like a lot of cars. How if many you, Mustangs have you seen with the same sort oh, of... Oh, yeah. That, that, that's the car I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah. It's the one we were just talking about the other day. It's the one with the leather bra strap on the front yeah, of it. And yeah. You're like, it was It was after they, after they redesigned that front. Yeah. And I remember being like, Every time I'd see it, be like, I didn't know everybody in Ashtabula was rich, apparently. It was, well, and, and you know that thing was probably not expensive no, now that I'm no, thinking about it. Were, yeah. But at the time, I agree, because every like every like uh, recently divorced gym coach I knew had that car yeah. and was tootling around town. In the with, mint green. Yep. With the, with the drop top that was just shredded. I was just going to say, the yeah. soft top is beat to yeah. shit. Yeah, For no tr- reason. Truly. An in- they tr- just got it. A, a vehicle that really existed at a very specific time. Uh-huh. And then just... One day they were just gone. One day everybody got a Nissan Maxima and started driving yeah. 120 miles an hour on yeah, the highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, you're on the highway and you see a little dot coming up behind you and you're like, oh, they're flying. I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, it's a Nissan Maxima. Yeah. And the, a, and the and the and the uh, bumper is partly detached. Yeah, it's that silver Maxima. They yeah. all smell the same. They cut the, they cut the springs to make the car look lower, but <laughs> so that means every bump is banging off yeah. the fucking street. Yeah. Like lowering a Maxima. Yeah. It's kind of gas. Just cutting cut the springs, bro. You don't have Th- to. But that guy, he has probably like better taste in hip hop than I do. That's the thing. Like he could put you on. 
the guy that driving the like lower Maxima. I mean, at a okay, at a time. I'm talking about when that when at the height of the Maxima, lowered Maxima. Yeah, that guy. That guy knew cool hip hop. Yeah, not now. Yeah, okay. Not now. If you found the no, lowered hip buddy. <laughs> no, no, that that is because the their main car is, is fucked, and they're yeah. using their 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 uncle's car yeah, that he's yeah. had parked out front for a while. Yeah. That's the lowered Maxima. He's fixing it up. <laughs> Blew it off and burned down. Don Armani's <laughs> ass up. Works with his brother now. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> that is. Um, okay, let me. Yeah, we yeah, got three, off track there. Three perfect records for you. To, 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 real fast, to wrap, to, to clarify, mine are uh, Life Less Plague by Carry On, The Glow Part 2 by The Microphones. You didn't do a third. What's your third? A Light Upon a Lake Whitney. Oh, okay. And we're talking perfect record yeah, yeah, front yeah, to yeah. back. I, but, I agree. But I, I was gen- really genuinely curious because, you know, I'm just, I don't know. You're, you're very music guy. Yeah, so here, like, I know I have one, like, right off the bat. Um, that I've had since I was a kid. I went to, when I was, I don't know, 14, 15 maybe, I went to a Borders bookstore, and it was closing, and I had my $20 that I'd have in the week to Mm -hmm. buy a CD, and I was like, I don't know what to do. I kind of have a lot of this stuff, and I just, they were closing, and I kind of panicked, and I just grabbed a record. And... I went back to my car and or my friend's car that he you, so you're drove like me 16. There. No, I, well, I wasn't driving, so I had to have been 14 or 15. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so and, and we went back to his. It was a it was a it was a maroon colored Honda Civic. Great. And and it was a it had the CD player attached to underneath. You know what I mean? Like we just kind of screwed it into the. <laughs> um, and it was and this is gonna this is gonna seem like it's gonna be cooler than it is, but it's not. But it's it's a little boring. But it was uh, Figure Eight from Elliot Smith. Okay, yeah. And I'd never heard Elliot Smith before. I just got it because it was in like the indie rock section, and that's what mm-hmm. I was into at the, at that moment in time. Yeah. And that full record is really perfect to me. Like it has this really great arc. It's a guy who's not feeling great, who's mm-hmm. trying to make a Beatles record, and it's just coming out. It very much feels like what I like when music does, which is sort of reinter. It's actually what I like what fashion does too. It's when someone has digested something a million times and then they tried to make their version of it. I think a lot of people think like, oh, that's copying. It's not copying. It's going to come out different. And because he was who he was and he tried to make a Beatles record by himself, not letting really anybody else record on the record, recorded the whole thing himself, it, it came out this very specific way that I don't think anyone else could make. It's kind of pop rock, but it's deeply sad. Very sad. And it's just, uh, but it's like, cause, you know, cause a lot of people will say like, oh, from a basement, it's like the really depressing one. I'm like, yeah, it's on the nose depressing because, mm-hmm. and I think that he was making not his best music to be honest. I don't know. This is going to be a controversial thing if you're an Elliott Smith fan, but I don't think it was his best music. It's sloppy. It's sad. It's, I don't think it's him at his best. Mm-hmm. It's because he was obviously, you know, addicted to drugs and having huge depression swings and shit. So mm-hmm. there was reasons, but this record to me felt like closest to everything I've learned about the guy. And I really liked, I really cared about him when I was younger. I still obviously really care about him, but that was him making his, like the record he wanted to make while still interpreting it correctly, like yeah. the, through himself. And it's just, I think it's kind of a, per, I mean, musicianship wise, I, it's insanely, you have to be insanely talented. And I, you know, I, I've been playing guitar a long time trying to learn like, guitar like he played it i still don't understand i don't even try anymore Mm -hmm. um and to make it not only use such complicated like chord progressions and songwriting it's still really simple and listenable and i think that that's way more complicated than just going like i'm gonna make a sad record yeah and because it's not that to me i love that record front to back i don't think there's never like when i sit down to listen to that record once a year at least I listen to the whole thing. I never skip a song. There's nothing I would skip. There's mm-hmm. nothing I don't like. I think it's like a kind of a perfect front to back record. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other, I mean, for me, Siamese dream from smashing pumpkins is that way. That was a record that I heard and went, it really opened my mind to like what, cause you know, the alt scene was especially like, you know, it's like all Nirvana and everything like that. And I loved all that shit. That was, you know, this, uh, this, a lot of like, uh, my friends that were older, listened to that stuff and put me onto it. And it's so, and it, like that stuff's so great, but it never like, like I love that, the Nirvana records and everything, but they didn't click for me. And then I heard that record and it clicked for me. Mm-hmm. And it was like, ever since then, I think it's what got me, that's what broadened me to like listen to Swerve Driver and Chapter House and My Bloody Valentine. And mm-hmm. cause it was all this like really like pretty and melodic, but still really gothy and dark yeah. and heavy at the same time. And nobody was really combining all those things. It felt like it was very like, secure in what it was. And I still think that like, 
a lot of what's going on in like fashion and style with like younger kids, this sort of like, like kind of like sexy nineties thing that they're into mm-hmm. really, if you go back and l- look at like, this wasn't Siamese dream, but this was uh Ava door. I think uh, smashing pumpkins, uh, video for today is like the perfect that it's so like slinky and sexy and weird and creepy, but still like gothy and yeah. heavy. It's, it's great. I mean, I just think that they did that thing so well and that style has been copied over and over and over and over and over again. They just were a band that didn't get put into a box. It was kind of metal. It was kind of goth. It was kind of like industrial. It was kind of pop. It was kind of gazy. Yeah. It was everything. And it was so, for me, it just like, it put me on to so much other stuff. But I but I still I still listen to that record very regularly because it, it didn't age for me at all. Yeah. And it's got and it, even though it's a long record, it doesn't have any skips for me. I just think all of them are like completely unique and great. And I like that. I like when bands don't just put out like it's great when one record sounds so like fluid and like one thing. Their records always would be like an acoustic song and something super fucking heavy and then some something kind of like electronic and dark. And it just yeah. felt like it jumped around but still kept them the whole time. Okay. So I really love that record. What was the name um, of it? Smash Pop- Siamese you? Dream. Okay. I think that this is a newer record. So I, I picked two like slightly older things. Mm-hmm. I think that like a newer thing for me is I really, really, really love Yuck's self-titled record. I've listened to it a million times over. Yep. It's like, yep. again, I think that the reality is as much as I love, well, I really just love like metal and hardcore. And then I love like hyper pop. Mm hmm. And then things in between and then shoegaze. Yeah. Th- that record is like, the, it's very nineties. And I think that like it's it, but it's got a twist Yeah, from the UK. So it's got that twist. That's, yeah. It's like nineties reinterpreted in like the, I think it was like, and I'm trying to remember what year it came out, but like mid to late two thousands. I mean, it just yeah. had like, it just has this really unique sound to me. I don't skip any songs, even the deluxe version. I'll go through the whole deluxe no, version. In fact, I feel I feel like a lot of the songs on the deluxe version are should have been like album cuts. Yeah, and yeah. I like that the band didn't only existed really for two records, like proper, um, at and least as the whole thing. And it's just I don't know. There's something about that band that just really, really resonates with me. And it, to be honest with you, it's probably because I like Smashing Pumpkins and Elliot Smith and shit. Yeah, yeah. It kind of sounds like the combination of those two things. But it's the record with the weird illustration. The guy with yeah. Big head, yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I just, I don't know what it is. Like that, that when I, when I, somebody that was, I, I found it a little bit later too. Somebody put it on or told me to listen to it when I was working in Chicago at the store I was working at, and they put it on and it was like an immediate, like the first that opening, because it, it's like, dun, 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 and I was like, that's the opening track, and I went, oh, I love this. Like yeah, I, yeah. I, I already know I love the whole thing, and I want to digest everything they've yeah. ever done. Um, and I have, and it's still that record that like hits. It yeah. feels like so perfect for the time. I know, like when I when I pictured that band, it looks exactly like what I want them to. Yep, I've yep. seen them live a few times. I've met a, the a couple of the guys and the girl from the band, and they're so cool. And it's just they're they're just exactly what I want in a rock band. Like it's like it's kind of pedal focused, but yeah. it's still grungy, and it's it's got this great like whiny voice. It's so great. See, if I if I would have had to guess, it would have taken me a minute, but I I, I would have guessed that that would be on your list. Like we've played that a I've lot. I've listened to bro. it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, and, Over I, the like, years. and it's like I always want to listen to it. I never get bored of it. No, no, it, it really never gets. gets I think old. if I'm gonna put a couple like other random ones that I won't talk about as much in the mix of like when I when I go through it quick, I, there's actually kind of as a runner up, or I don't know if it qualifies, but there's an EP from the band Swearin' that I really love called What a Dump, and it's like this perfect like that Philadelphia twee punk kind of stuff. It's the yeah. girl. It's a uh, it was uh, Allison Crutchfield. She had a great solo record too, but and, and all the other swearing records are great too. But that specific one feels so. Even though I know they're a Philly band, they talk about like the Midwest a lot. It must have been from a tour or something, and it just feels mm-hmm. very like I don't want to live in this town anymore. Kind of punk, oh, and I it's still you. like and it's fuzzy and and like the record like the recording quality is like right up my alley. It's kind of like that Hotline TNT band. It's like yeah. it's bad in the most perfect like smart way. Uh-huh. And uh, I really like that like front to back. But I think it's only six songs. So I don't know if that counts. And no, then I like, think it counts. I think it counts. I love like Avalon from Roxy Music, the whole that whole record, because that whole record to me is more, it, it might as well to me, even though it's got hits on it, it should just be like one long song because it's like one long vibe. And I really yeah. like their specific like, you know, I, I forget who like wrote the review about it that was saying like, oh, this should only be listened to like right before night becomes morning. And it's just like when you get that in your head and you play it, it's like, oh, it's just, it's just a it. perfect, yeah. they just nailed it. They nailed yeah. like a, a, a vibe. And I yeah. think that's really yeah. cool. I don't think of what else. I well, you just mentioned that Hotline TNT record, Fireman's Carry. That's like that's an EP like, too. Yeah, it's so, so good. Dude. I mean, the, the re- I, I listened to it pretty recently, 
because they finally put it on Spotify. And it's like the sound that he's able to get while still being really well recorded, but it's but it's bad, if that makes sense. The perfect style of bad for me. You know what I mean? Like just Dope. like what's the free and fuzzy and great. What's that YouTube series where he's playing it in like a ski repair shop oh, or something? You know uh, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Oh, the far out audio tree. Yeah, one. is that what, okay. Yeah, yeah, they just dropped one this morning for the band Mama that I really like. Yeah. They put out a great album this year. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I really liked that video. I yeah, like yeah. That well they had the great there's the great sunflower bean video. Yeah. And there's also the great uh what's the other one that's really I really love? Uh what's the band we listen to? Not Howdy, uh it was like around the same time as that record. I can picture the cover, but I'm not going to get it. Mm. Mm. Shoot, I'm not going to get it. We'll yeah. drop it somewhere yeah. at some point. Yeah, but we'll, that's we'll, we'll circle one. back. The whole it, series but. is great. Yeah, no, I, just, yeah. I, just, I, I thought the concept was sick. Feels yeah. cool, but... I'm trying to think of anything else that, like... I mean, like, where you've been... I mean, I'm really circling around the same thing because it's just what's in... But where you've been from Dinosaur yeah, Jr. was yeah. such a big deal to me. That has... That, that doesn't have these Start chopping yeah. where you've been, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the, yeah. the whole... That whole, but the whole, it really doesn't have any skips for me. Like it's, it's, if you, especially if you like guitar, it's the whole thing yeah, is just yeah, so good. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I could keep finding ones. Wait, if I, hold on. Side note. Did I tell you we were watching some show? I'm not going to be able to think of it, bro. But it, it's like some sort of scene. And then a guy walks into the frame and he's got long hair and glasses and a hat and this and that. And I just like happened to like, I just like glanced up. We were doing something. I don't remember what it was. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck? And I rewind it. And it's Jay Mascus. He makes a cameo in some show for like literally seven seconds. And it was so obscure. Well, there's no way they gave him a speaking part. Oh, yeah. No, of course not. <laughs> what he says, he comes and he's like, you really shouldn't do that or something. Someone's someone's digging through a trash can. And he's <laughs> the guy who's coming to get the trash yeah. can or something like that. And he goes, you really shouldn't do that. And I remember being like, God, that sounds a lot like Jay Mascus, but there's no fucking way. That, but it was. He's such a weirdo. But I'll say uh, of musicians from that, like, I feel like a lot of bands, especially as they get older, it's like, mm, I don't know that I need you to make more. More music to be honest with you dinosaur jr keeps making albums like in their like three years ago that new one came yeah, out and, and it we rinsed great. that in the shop yeah. for a couple months too great yeah he you know i think he's i mean outside of being absolutely the worst dressed <laughs> guy in in <laughs> alternative rock hat, the, the weird he's, yeah it's, he's always got like the ugliest t-shirts and and those stupid hats red front red glasses yeah, it's too many things <laughs> and i don't know what it is either no it looks like a guy who owns like a a like like a comic book themed coffee shop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all of their iconography is like weird. Like, you know, like it's like it's like a version of drugs, but I'm like, I've taken drugs and I've never seen any of this. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. So yeah, it's it, it it I you know. Yeah. Yeah. But that's on there. Okay. Dinosaur Junior record be on there. Cool. I could keep going, but I'm really just now spiraling around <laughs> Michael Lasik <laughs> one decade. This will be it forever. <laughs> yeah. Um Another thing I'd like to note, that Narrowhead EP, sick. The, the, the full new, length came the, out today. Yeah, I know. I listened to it. They're, they're playing. I'm saying this out loud, because, but they're playing at High Dive. We should go. We should go. That, yeah. I mean, that's I'm a good bar tickets. to go see them. At. I haven't been to get, a show like that in a minute, but I would be love loud. to see Narrowhead. Shout out Narrowhead. Okay. Let's get Narrowhead on the pod. <laughs> yeah, we'll get Narrowhead on the pod. <laughs> well, Howdy was on uh, How Long yeah. Gone. That was yeah. a fun episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know why. I band. I just know they're both Texas bands. So Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But all right. Anyway, uh, so one of the topics for today, yeah, hit me with um, things I don't a, know what it a is. guy in our Discord, which is gonna, it's all circled around kind of our communities. But um, Canoe Club over the years, we've existed in multiple kind of like nooks, right? We're on Instagram, obviously. I've been involved in Style Forum for quite a while, which, if you don't know, it's a, it's a, an online forum. There is a classic menswear side and a streetwear and denim side. And, you know, it's in the same realm of like uh, Super Future and, you know, yeah. fashion forum. And so we've been on there for a minute. And, and our customer, uh, uh, I don't know if he wants me to mention his name, but he had a question. He, he was wondering how our opinion on how like communities have changed over the years in fashion, right? Like there was. I think when Instagram first came around, that was a largely how we all got into clothes because it was a massive like sharing fits of your denim type situation. Yeah. And you wanted you wanted the white common projects and then they released the Navy ones and you saw some dude in those jeans and the Navy ones. You wanted the Navy common projects. And well, I think it was a situation where for the first time 
you could see things from around the world fast and you did it wasn't as niche you, you can know because it in crowd because yes there was all there was always like there were different uh, forums, no, no question. But those that, those were so niche, and they were a little. I mean, not that they're not still a little bit like this, but they're definitely like echo chambers too. For sure, this was more of like the first time you could see like all, every type of fashion being represented. Like you know, it was kind of it just felt a little bit like broader. So I do agree. Like it was like the first time I think like it became known by a much wider audience than some hyper niche thing online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at for at some point, APC jeans were not a household name. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but then that it, it, it just created a way to bond with people through clothing. If you were from an area that would not have had that exposure, basically. Right? It, yeah. I mean, it had been growing. I think that's why a lot of the forums started getting kind of segmented. You know what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think it had been like, you, you saw it. You saw the popularity, especially in men's, rising, and it was through the forums. Because initially when I was on some of like the early, early ones, it was all just like classic tailoring. Some so There was a little bit of stuff for like high-end designers, like mm-hmm. like Comme de Garcon or whatever, like yeah. that kind of thing. But for the most part, it really existed in those two hyper extremes, either classic tailoring or like, like, you know, not streetwear and denim like it is now. It was more just like really high end, like guys that were collectors yeah. that would kind of communicate and like trade things on. There. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but eBay also was, I mean, there was no, like there, like the second hand thing was not huge. I mean, most guys I knew that traded, like you, you were trading high end stuff, not yeah. or like paying for it, like, you know, between each other. Like it wasn't, there was no, like, I mean, there was eBay it just wasn't being used for clothing as much as it is now. And now it's yeah. grail. It's become now. an archive almost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you participate in any of those communities? Were you, yeah, were you I mean, like I a forum guy at all? A little. I mean, you and I both know, like we we did like Bridge Nine and shit like of that, course. like, yeah, that's like hardcore. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I was in it because of music and guitars, yeah, um, and drums and all that kind of stuff because those were always niche communities. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I participated that way a little bit, and then but never like I wasn't like it wasn't part of a community. In fact, I really have seen you use it more of a, as a community than I ever did because mm-hmm. I I then I I did participate a little in like early style forum and some stuff like that. Not a ton. Yeah. Just, I just wanted to understand it and I liked reading it and I liked mm-hmm. se- keeping up on people's outfits and, you know, seeing what other people were doing. Cause like you said, it didn't really exist in social media yet. Yeah. Then, um, I ran a, like a style forum for a business for a little bit just to like answer questions and things like that. Yeah. So that was like, and it was mostly regarding shoes and it was a lot of sizing questions mm-hmm. and Brannock and mm-hmm. lasts. And it was very like, specific um, where the customers know more than you surprisingly absolutely i'm air quoting um, but <laughs> absolutely in some in some situations they might i yeah. mean they certainly were more dedicated to if it than i session, was at a certain point yeah if the session <laughs> yeah. goes that deep maybe but yeah but they um but yeah i mean so i i i don't i did not use it as a community as you as you did and do now mm-hmm. um it it didn't make sense to me that way. It was more of a tool. And I think a lot of people still use it as a tool. How do you feel like you, I mean, I know kind of how you got into it, but maybe explain that. But then, but then like, how do, how have you, just, how do you use it as a, like, at what point did you cross the threshold from being like, I go on here to kind of like bullshit or see some stuff to I've, I'm actually like making like friends and acquaintances here. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's literally like a perfect segue. I think, Well, okay. I mean, you know, a lot of people our age kind of grew up on the internet, right? Yeah. So we've seen, we've seen all these different variations of communities and I, you know, I, I made a fucking RuneScape account in February of 2001. We're talking pre 9-11. And then, you know, uh, the Bridge 9, I would participate in that. Uh, Obviously, Bridge 9 record label, uh, it was called the B9, uh, just a forum. So, you know. Some of you guys are punching your roof, your car right now at the the, <laughs> the idea of the B nine being mentioned, <laughs> but um, yeah, I th- in yeah. So can you ask me the question again? Because I yeah, I guess what I was what I was wondering is like, at what point did you? St- I mean, because I feel like most people, not most, but a lot of people at that point were using it to kind of pop in and like get questions answered mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. see pictures or kind of like you're using yeah, it more like yeah, a tool. No, okay. At what point did you like? Or like, I, cause I don't want to say learn, but at what point did you cross that threshold into like making like friends there and community yeah, building yeah. community there? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, specifically style forum for the shop. That was the first kind of thing outside of whatever we were doing on Instagram at that point where we were kind of 
looking for a community online that is more intentional because canoe club is as as it was said and i know some of the guys like this it's a want store not a need store you know yeah. what i mean so and and with it being a multi-brand retailer it's not like we can just be like all right let's throw 10 grand and seo we're gonna sell only fucking water bottles and we're gonna sell all of them you know what i mean sure and so i think we wanted to find a place to kind of showcase our personalities before we started doing stuff like this. But, um, I mean, I got on style for him and there's a fellow local in Boulder named Sean and he goes, Oh dude, you should be, you should hop in this discord. There's a bunch of style forum guys in this discord. And I was like, okay, cool. Never heard of discord. I thought it was going to be a place where it was style form, just a smaller community. Um, anyway, I've been in that discord for like four or five years now. We do secret Santas. Like they're my homies. I've met a lot of them. We all know each other by name. And I guess to, finally reach the point I'm trying to make is I feel, and maybe you agree or disagree, I don't use Instagram, but I feel there's kind of becoming a, people are seeking out much more intimate, small, intentional communities. Yeah, absolutely. And I just think that that's kind of where everything's going in, re- in response to the question, like when you start using it as a tool, Styleform is a great tool. I got to know all those dudes through the discord we were in, but now for the last six months, ish we've been running the canoe club discord and i think like in terms of what we do as a store and our what we sought out to do which was find a more intentional community i think that that has been perfect i think it's been like a very natural evolution for us to end up in this very intentional closed private ish place yeah and i think everybody is kind of moving away from the uh performative nature of a lot of social media where you do things so that you can share them on the internet, so that you can have this sort of sort of image. Whereas I think people are kind of leaving that and seeking out, you know, a Discord, a Slack community, a much more like personal thing. Well, I mean, I think back, and I don't know if we've talked about this or not, so if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. But when COVID happened and lockdown happened, especially for our business, it was a small, smaller business, certainly smaller at the time, We'd only been around for like a couple of years yeah. and we didn't know what to do. I mean, there was, cause I mean, no one had a blueprint for how to deal with this. You know what I mean? And all we talked about, like Bob and I, I think we mentioned it on his episode was like, he just kept saying, I, we really, I, the whole goal was to always replicate the in-store experience online. Yeah. And now it's going to be more important than ever. And I really, it made that statement made more sense to me than ever when it was like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to have the in-store taken away. Now, yeah. it, now it is really important. It's not going to, it's not an option. It's, it's a really important thing. And I was trying to think, what do we as a smaller store right now have that other stores don't? And I think that like what we had created in the store was this really fun, conversational, open community of people. And like, you know, again, we've said it a million times, but community was always important to us just because of like uh, growing up with the hardcore scene and everything. It was such like a, it was such a nice place to go to meet people with niche interests that were super welcoming. And it was like, you know, Island of Misfit Toys kind of thing. And I I just, I really cared about that as a kid. And I was like, you know what? This exists in the forums. We should be involved in there. I know there's other people talking about this. And I think that what happened, this like, the thing that happened during the COVID when there was a shutdown was we started getting involved in those. And what we found was like you're saying, I think everyone was online more than ever mm-hmm. at that time. Cause mm-hmm. what else were you going to do? People were dying to connect obviously because yeah. it, it suddenly got cut off. And even if you weren't like an internet guy, you kind of became one because what the hell else were you supposed to do? There's only so much TV to watch and yeah. shit to do yeah. in the house. So it was a really good time for us to be involved in that because what I think we saw was this beginning of an exodus from traditional social media that of the time. And it was because it was flooded and there was more marketing on it than ever. There's more advertising on it than ever. And it just, I started to like, st- I, I wasn't seeing the things I wanted to see all the time. Cause it's getting, you know, kind of gets curated for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cause that, I, I think people think that's been happening forever. If you remember, that wasn't that long ago that it wasn't really like that. It was chronological order yeah, it was, and it was, it was you what saw it was, what you yeah. saw and it was mostly your friends and, um, it changed. And I think that, because of what, when it changes like that, you don't, you want there to be an authentic, people are dying for authenticity. It's why we're doing the podcast is why we were on YouTube. It's why we we're trying to give people the most authentic canoe club experience that we could as the people who represent canoe club. Yeah. 
that has naturally progressed into using, you know, things like Discord and everything where we're finding those people that are still, they're, they're kind of using it like traditional social media was intended, I mm-hmm, think. Mm-hmm. And it's just getting more and more niche because it has to, because yeah. everything else is so flooded. I think it's cool because it's also like, like self-policing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that like, I've always stood by this in that like, it's kind of the same reason like, again, I'm sorry to keep going back to the hardcore thing. It's just like what we had. Mm-hmm. That experience was very self-policing. People were generally pretty nice to each other. Yeah, Yeah. everyone like beat each other up in the in pit and shit. But it was like, but it was no one. No one rarely was there serious people getting hurt. In all honesty, yes, people got, but they weren't mad. It wasn't fights. Yeah, there was people beating on each other, and sometimes there'd be a little contention or something. But it was rare that things got out of control. Mm -hmm. It was like a mutual respect. And I think that that's kind of what we're seeing here. If you bring like-minded people to the same place to talk about, you know, interests that they have, like that thing, bringing people together, we, we talked about it before. How, how are all these people yeah. that, that were into hardcore, how are they all into clothes? Cause I feel like a lot of them yeah, are. Yeah. And that's weird. And I'm like, I think if you, if you were like, if you were trying to get me to find a, a, a piece of the puzzle that it works every direction, it's community. Yeah. Everyone wants that community. This this offers a very niche community, and I think it's one of the more fun things about doing what we do. Yeah. You get to meet like-minded people, and most of the time they're pretty interesting because if they take this seriously and their taste level is at where it is to be into this stuff, it's probably that way about everything else they do, yeah. about food, about music, about art, about whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's going to be at that level. And we've got guys in there that are like crazy about, uh, God, you know, I don't want to talk about this, about gardening. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, and, but, but I mean, I, but I do respect, I'm, I'm mostly joke. I'm, yeah, he's kidding. He's kidding. I'm 50, he, he, 50% he's, joking. He's serious that he wouldn't eat food from someone's yard, but he also. Absolutely not. I would not mow my yard. I will not take, I don't ever want a yard at all. I don't want, I don't, I have no yard. interest. It should be concrete or stone. Yeah. But I like that, like, I know that it takes a certain taste level and like and like uh, interest level and I think a level of intelligence to be into that kind of thing seriously yeah. that I think is really cool and respectful. I mean, and like, and the same thing goes for like not all the music that people drop in there is my taste, but I'm like, damn, this is like three levels, like whatever they're into, it's three levels beyond the surface. You know exactly. what I mean? And yeah. I think that yeah. that's what's really cool. You're putting a bunch of people in the same place that have gone three levels beyond the surface yeah. um, in everything that they do. And I think that that trend, like, even if I wasn't into coffee or something, if someone is telling me it like that, it's kind of like I believe with the store. It's like, if you let me tell you the story and you still don't buy it, that's fine. But I just want you to understand what we're doing. That's yeah, it. Yeah. It's, you, not, it's not for everyone to buy. I know that. But I want I want it to at least be appreciated. It's kind of like we've talked about before. It's kind of like art. I know that everyone can't afford a you know million dollar painting, mm-hmm. but you can still sit there and go, Jesus, I really, yeah, I love it. I connect with it. I respect yeah. it. And I, that's all I really want out of this. And I think that some of these these avenues have been really awesome places to connect with community that feel the same way yeah. about those types of things and learn from each other about interests that they have beyond mm-hmm. um, fashion, which is really cool. Yeah. I think that's why, and like I said, I think that's why people are drawn to each other. Um, it's, just, it's like, it's just the way you love things, the way you're passionate about things. I can respect anyone no matter what they're interested in. And well, let's back that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but I, I really, I do really respect passionate people. And I think that in most cases, these forums are full of very passionate people. Yeah. And I yeah, think yeah, that that's, yeah, that's yeah. really cool. What, yeah. what, do, what do you think is, what to you is the most important aspect of, of these community, like communities that exist outside? Or you know what? I think I know answer that question, but I also want you to answer how do you view how it's changed? Like how has it changed in your eyes? How have the communities changed? Yeah. Again, I just think people are like, I think there's an exodus from the massive element of an Instagram, a Twitter. I think people are becoming exhausted with having access and information thrown at them 100% of the time. And it doesn't feel genuine. Like you said, COVID happened. Everybody understood. All right. Well, if we're going to, if we're going to power through this, we need to start doing shit online, you know? So I feel like two years, three years ago, um, more than ever, there was a massive influx of information of advertisements of places to buy shit, you, you know, anything, any information. And I just think that people are kind of feeling fatigued from that and are seeking out much more intentional, small communities, i.e. a discord, a Slack community. Um, both of which we 
exist in, you know. I mean, group chats, group DMs. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like you, I do, I think you're right. It's like, it's sort of, it's, be, it went from, it went from super niche mm-hmm. to broader, broader, extremely broad. Everyone has access to it. And now we're sort of reverting back to like, it's That's, getting yes. more, it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter yep. because you kind of feel like you kind of have to just shield yourself a little bit to, the broad community. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Cause I, and I, I, yeah, you nailed it that, that you nailed it spot on. Cause what, one thing that drew me to it was like, you're telling me there's a whole bunch of dudes wearing expensive jeans and that's, that's their whole shtick and that's, that's it. Right. And I was like, well, I kind of want a pair now. You know yeah. what I mean? I get it. I'm into it. I want to do that. And then it became, Everybody was into fashion in Summer Garden. Everybody was wearing jeans. And then you'd go to Uniqlo and they started sewing in the selvage for the, from the last like 10 inches down the inseam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then so everybody was into it and it felt less exclusive. It felt less like something that was uh, unique to you. And it just felt like you were participating in another mass. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because, you know, we talked, we, we talked with Kenyatta about like sameness and how we sort of missed that. Yeah. And what I think is funny that might be kind of happening right now is, like, you're right, it got so broad that, like, you know, like, the selvage little... And look, I'm never going to poo-poo accessibility. If you want the look and that's where you awesome. can afford it, jump in. Like, you know, like, I, I, I hate the... Oh, you, that's that's not real. So it's like, oh, shut the hell up. You know what I mean? Like, it's all the same when you're standing three feet away. It's jeans. So if that makes somebody else feel good, then that's what they should do. And the look, that's better than, like whatever it was before, whatever, you know, mm-hmm, bad mm-hmm. fitting gene it was before. So it's like, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, they're trying to evolve the way they can. So don't fuck. But regardless, um, it got so broad that I think like, you know, let's just take jeans. You take jeans. It was a super niche community. Only a handful of people followed. It was mostly vintage and collecting. And there was a handful of people that made raw, blah, 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 blah. Then it came, then it became this like growing thing to the point where like, all that original J crew, they were pushing selvage denim for the first time. Mm-hmm. And it was like more, you know, $198. And, and then it became this, like, how crazy can you get it? Like, can, you know, naked and famous type shit. I mean, all the way up to like an Oni or whatever, like this crate, like how niche could you possibly, how rare and weird could you possibly get this thing? But it got, but at the same time with at, when it hits that precipice, you're like, I'm out. Mm-hmm. I can't go any further niche. It's so everyone has them. This isn't an original thing anymore. And now I just want like regular pants or jeans and I don't want to think about it anymore. I don't care if they're selvage. I don't care if they're whatever. I just want to be, I just want to have jeans that fit well and are normal. You know what I mean? Like I know now I'm better educated. I know that I'd rather have Japanese denim. If it's selvage, that's usually better depending on if it's like a really good wash or whatever. But I really want it to be, I just, I don't want it to be a thing. I think about it's thing I'm educated on and I have a nice fitting pair and I keep up with the silhouettes and that's about where it ends. Yeah. So you like take the information, take it to its craziest point to its broadest point, And then you sort of just move on. Yeah. And I think that's what you're saying is kind of to draw back. It's kind of the same thing that's happening. I think though, I think we're going to go to the back and I think that's why you keep thinking like, Oh, maybe I want a project gene again. Yeah. And I think it's because you're back inside of this niche community. It doesn't feel as like, you're not getting hammered with that anymore because I think people have yeah. sort of left the whole salvage thing behind, like that that like denim guy thing behind yeah, yeah. for the most part. And uh, now it's sort of getting back to like, oh, now we're inside these little communities and everyone kind of wants to have the same thing and be uh-huh, working uh-huh. on the same thing at the same time. I, and it's what, I mean, you know, I think everyone knows that, that you know, that people talk about how, fa- how cyclical fashion is. And that's sort of, I think it's what the communities are yeah, doing too. Yeah. It goes from the super niche thing and it, you want it to be bigger than it is. You want to find a bigger community than yourself or a couple peers you have. Yeah, yeah. Then you find it, they create a trend, trend gets out of control, the trend gets huge, and then you're trying to suck it back into being like a small community uh-huh, thing uh-huh. again because it got too broad. You know, reclaim the gene project. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that we're kind of, it's kind of, it, you're looking at the same timeline, the same bell curve of the, of, of, yeah. a, of a trend this is just a trend inside of how people are finding and digesting yeah, their, their, yeah, yeah, their stuff. Yeah. So like the community that follows fashion is sort of doing the same, you know, digestion that mm-hmm. like the trend is doing, mm-hmm. which is pretty interesting. Makes me wonder too, because I mean, I we're in discord for clothes. I'm in a couple different discord style forum, canoe club, uh, that throwing fits one, but it makes me wonder like, you know, as you're saying, it's cyclical. Do you think that everybody's going to be like, ah, kind of tired of this little niche friend group I've made. I want to go back. I want it to go back to the masses. 
I don't know. I mean, I think that like social media would need to change, like broad stroke social media would need to change. And I don't know if that's maybe what we don't understand is like being inside of a discord or something that might be it. It might be a thing that hasn't blown up yet and it will blown up and it will change. And then that will evolve into something and we'll, it'll get big and then we'll try to suck it back into something small again. I don't know. I mean, if I, if I'm, if, if it's, if that's the cyclical thing, then this is like being on Instagram in the early 2000s or whatever, or maybe it was not early. Early, No, early 2010s. 2010s. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it might be like being on there then when it was still sort of new and kind of the wild west or like Tumblr used to be, which was very much like the wild west. That's a great example. That's a great example in terms of, yeah. Cause, cause again, the question kind of all spawned from how fashion communities changed over the years. And we've been circling around this, it. I don't know that we've nailed the thought, yeah. but Tumblr is something else worth mentioning. Like that was also a period. That was a that was a huge place that I digested fashion for a yep. long time. I mean, a, a lot of the bloggers, the blogger era stuff was based on Tumblr just because it was a free way to host that stuff, and that yep. was what was in your RSS feed. I mean, I think I've talked about it before. We used to I used to like trade with guys like my RSS feeds on USB sticks to like yeah. so like, everyone could like have the you know yeah whoever could have the most niche for you know what I mean yeah yeah um, I mean dude it wasn't even that long ago it's it's no. within the realm of working at Canoe Club that when you'd go to engineeredgarments.com or whatever EG's official site was it was their Tumblr a with Tumblr one page, photo yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of like the storefront yeah, I mean it was a way it was a major way to digest fashion for a long time yeah. especially like and I think that's a lot a lot of the way like inspo boy I mean I think that like. Jown was that was that that might have started on Tumblr and then it got taken down and then he hosted a new I don't remember if I'm remembering that Hmm. correctly or not but it was a place where I first saw like people's like mood boards for the first time yeah I heard people a bunch of people digesting like Pinterest and stuff suddenly again and I don't know if it's just because that people got away from that and started shoving it all there you know what dude I think people were always going to want the same thing out of people people are going to want to see how people curate people are going to want to see how people dress and how they live and we're looking at it People want it more and more intimate, as Mm -hmm, intimate mm -hmm. as humanly possible, because that's actually what probably everyone's craving is that intimacy, especially with every the last three years and the lack of going places and seeing people going to stores. And I I think it's just going to be the creative people that are good at putting themselves out there are going to continually find new avenues to do so. And I think there's always going to be this like hard craving from people to find it. Yeah. So I just think it's going to, con- you're, you're always chasing the same dragon. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think yeah. that's all this is. It's just like, it's going to move and it's going to ebb and flow and it's going to, no matter what people that are into fashion or into art or into music or whatever, especially if, at a certain level, you're always looking for what's the like, slightly more obscure way what's how is it being innovated i think that's what you're doing when i when i look for new music i i'm telling you most of the stuff i like is like 90s alternative stuff yeah and old hardcore and all this and all i'm looking for now is like who's who's amalgamating who, who's doing something new with that or who's pushing the boundaries a little bit of that yeah, art yeah. form and i'm just chasing that who's pushing it more who's twitching it more and that's all you're doing with the communities you're just fi- you're trying to find a new place to put it that's like a little more, it's a little different from the one before. And it's just yeah. because you have a, you have a bigger or new platform. Yeah. And I think people are always going to want to do that. I don't think that's going to go away. It's just going to change hands nonstop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't know where it's going next. I feel like we're in, we're inside of, we're, we're at the beginning of a new bell curve. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But you like know. our discord. It's a fun place fun. to be. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. I mean, I think that like there was, there's style forms fun. I mean, Agreed. you know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's old, it's older. It's a more mature platform. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's dudes with registered dates. I mean, I feel like back is like 2006, 2004. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an interesting, th- those, those things are pretty interesting. And, and I, and I do like, I think the only difference between that and like a discord is like, that's a, that's a, that's a living body of work. Um, it's a yeah. It's a public archive. It's yeah. all there. It's it, pretty interesting in that yeah. in that way because you really watch. I mean, through that public archive, you can go back a certain amount of posts or whatever and see like watch an entire trend live and die. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, which 100%. is pretty wild. You can watch people get into it, hive mind it, and then turn on it. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's pretty interesting in, in yeah. that way. It's like a yeah. It's a it's Seeing a living an archive. It's like a diary. It's an interesting thing. We'll see where it goes, man. I, I'm, I, 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 I still love this shit. Brother, how, no matter how much I'm participating, I just love trying to keep up. Um, yeah. I, I think coming from the, you know, the Midwest and being into this kind of like more niche stuff, I always felt like I was trying to keep up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still do, and I think it's fun to keep yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. I think some people get tired of it or whatever. Like, I just want to do this one thing, and I'm like, no, it's, no, it's fun. It's fun to switch it up. The DIY it's like, nature. It's like changing around yeah. the furniture in your room. 
Yeah, you it feel just, good. It just feels different, and it you know now my brain's Brand different for a little while. Yeah, it helps you appreciate things in new ways, and I think that that's what Discord's doing right now. It's helping me reappreciate the community behind like fashion again. Yeah, and I really and I really like that. Yeah. All right. I think we did a nice job there. I, I don't think, know where yeah. I don't know where we began. Or it, yeah, it's one of those things where, as as I was asking the question, I was like, "This is not a real defined question." Yeah. But I think it's worth talking about the community because, again, so many dudes. I, I just don't. I think it's so rare that somebody, men or women, walk into a store and for the first time and see something from Capital and like, "Oh, I love this." I'm willing to pay $700 and now I get it and I'm in the community. Like you're introduced to it somewhere. You're indoctrinated in some way. I think a lot of times it goes the reverse way. You start with the community and grow from there. And then 100%. you go, oh my God, like I, these guys get it. These guys, the way these yeah, guys are yeah, talking yeah. about, like I'm saying, I, I am very sold on things via passionate people. Like I, yeah. you can kind of sell me anything to if you're, if you if you feel this strongly about yeah, it, and yeah, I think that that's, that's that's it's also it's also I think it's such a great tool for people that are like trying to make a decision around buying something. I mean, yeah. I mean, our communities at least are so helpful with sizing and understanding of fabrics, and yeah. I don't know. I, I like that ours. I think we're lucky so far. Knock on wood that it's a very non judgment judgmental place. There's not a lot of like ripping people, and that if you ask no. questions, no matter how dumb they are, like you're all good. We we got you. So. It's still it's still what it can be at its best right now. So we'll see how it grows from here. But it's it's been really fun. It's yeah. it's fun. It's fun finding the new thing to do. Yeah. What's the hot take for today? Well, I don't know. I don't know that we have a hot take. I had I have a I have a thought, which I don't know. If this needs to necessarily be a hot hot take, but broth is sauce. Okay. So <laughs> so the, your your make the hot take is a statement. Yeah. That broth. It, Tell me what the counterpoint to you on this is. Like if, if someone, if, if I were to make the argument against myself, yeah, I, broth, I mean, I, what broth is soup? Is that the different? What's the no broth is sauce? Like, but you know, as I'm saying it, if I were to <laughs> poke some holes in it, ketchup is not broth. But what's a consomme then? You know what I'm saying? What you what you dip mm-hmm. your berea? <laughs> I'm from Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tacos. <laughs> in. You know what I'm saying? That's a you're dipping it in a a sauce, a broth. Yeah. I don't know. But you don't... Well, I guess... I mean, I can kind of... Like, you put the ramen noodles in. You sort of dip them in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah. So it's like Soy a, sauce isn't necessarily a broth, but, like, the broth is an additive to a food that ultimately, like, makes it better. The, the thought spawned, I was like, you know what? The sauce makes it. You know what I'm saying? We were cooking something, and I was like, you know what it is? Sauce makes it, whether it's this and that. And I, I had said broth, and it got me thinking, like, well, shit, broth is a sauce. I don't like... When people call marinara, like, I don't like when people call that gravy. Wow, that's insane. I've never heard it before. I don't like that. I, I heard sometimes well, I hear gravy. people say that, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't like it. Also, when I think, when I look at it and think of the word gravy, I'm like, oh, I don't like that word. I don't like the way it looks now, suddenly. Yeah, yeah. It's a different thing. But sauce is fine. Yeah. I don't. Maybe I actually I just wanted, don't care, but like I'm fine with broth being sauce. If I don't think it's sauce anymore. I just decided. What is it to you then? Broth? Sort of just a thing that warms another thing and has some flavor? Yeah. It's a warming I vessel? think the differentiating thing here is What's you can What's the difference drink- between broth and a microwave? <laughs> <laughs> well. Well. <laughs> I could go on that <laughs> all day. Yeah, a lot of work to do here. <laughs> yeah. No, I take it back. I take it back. But I don't know. I don't really have a hot take. I don't have a hot take for this one. Yeah, I mean, broth is sauce. Broth is sauce. You can sound off here. Oh. What, why did you blew in here in the middle of our, in all our podcast? Controversial pizza opinion. Controversial pizza Controversial opinion. Controversial pizza opinion? Yeah. Okay. Popular pizza opinion. Like, give me, give me an stuff, example. Like I don't like stuffed crust, or I like pineapple. On pizza. Stuffed crust is disgusting. Like it's like string cheese stuffed mm-hmm. into bread. Mm-hmm. Okay. What, 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 what were the, what was the other one? I don't know. You tell me. You're on popular pizza. Opinion. An unpopular okay. pizza opinion. Here's what I like. I like when pizza is really thin, like a cracker. I like. It doesn't. I don't need toppings. That's fine if they're on yeah. there. It's really irrelevant to me. I don't want anything weird. Not that I. I'm not even opposed to it. Like it tastes fine. Yeah. But I don't want it. Like if I could choose, I'd be like, no, just just put just cheese regular. on it. Yeah. Pepperoni's yeah. fine. Traditional. We've we've talked about pizza in hot takes before. I'm realizing. Have we? Yeah. Because I say I remember asking you like, but well, you'll eat a pepperoni pizza, right? 
Oh yeah, you were asking me about like if I'd eat meat. Though, yeah, I think is what meat, that had yeah. to do with anything. And I don't know. I, I agree. <sighs> Stuffed crust is gross. Anything that's not regular pizza, if I can't get it at like a slice shop, then I'm like, no, forget it. It's done. Yeah. It's just, it's doing too many things. I'm not saying I don't. I w- I don't like it. If I'm just saying like, if I could choose whatever, I could build my dream pizza. It doesn't have anything to do with I, this. Okay, fair. And I swear to God, we're not going to do food stuff for well, every single gotta, hot take. Dial it in. For some reason, this seems to get people's goat more than anything else, yeah. though. It, it, like, of what people disagree on. I think everybody has an opinion on food. My pizza take is... Oh, God. Hot Pockets are just as good as pizza. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, are these, what do these things have to do with one another? It's controversial. It's it's controversial in that no one's ever had that. No one's been like, hey, pizza or Hot Pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying a pepperoni hot pocket is just as good as a pepperoni pizza from anywhere. I mean, here's what I'll tell you. I think that like oven pizza is just as good as anywhere else too. Oh, we're talking home run in. F- great. The home run in is great. That's great. Uh, but I'll take a f- Jack's for Christ's sake. Yeah. I don't care. No, you don't. I, it doesn't. Pizza's pizza. I don't. I can't even get that controversial. I don't really care. It's no. all pretty good. Yeah. Who we'll, cares? We'll just agree. Hot pockets are. But you you want to agree that Hot Pockets are better... As good. As good as just any normal pizza. For the most part. Well, I think that answers the a question that I'm sure a lot of our listeners have had of like, man, I wonder if Chase likes Hot Pockets <laughs> more than pizza. So, customer service. Can you... No, no, before you wrap up, <laughs> I want you to tell everyone a quick story. And I want you to tell them from ideation to creation... The yeah. cr- I want you to tell them about the uh-huh. toaster strudel. Yeah, no, thing. I got you. I knew that's where we were going. For a long time, I've been saying I wanted to get sponsored by toaster strudel. Mm-hmm. For, he doesn't do anything, just to be <laughs> clear. It's just, it's just a, it's a normal job and goes home. I just want a pallet yeah, to be but delivered. He, but he wants to be sponsored. Once a month. But I love toaster strudels as long back as I can think. I've been eating them. Mm-hmm. And I had, I had cooked up this idea a while ago for a toaster strudel casserole. where you what, hold, uh, Pause one second. He talked about this for years, <laughs> years that he had this idea. Yeah. And I need you. I'm going to, I, cause what I think I wanted to tell the audience what I think, what I was thinking when you kept pitching uh-huh, this, uh-huh. you talked about, it was basically the concept was a toaster strudel lasagna basically, yes. right? Yes. Sweet though. You know, when he kept pitching this and again, heard it for about once a week for a few years, <laughs> I was thinking, okay, I'm sort of on board. He's going to get like. You know, some phyllo dough. He's going to put down a a homemade compote. He's going to put layers, 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 Mm -hmm. layers, put homemade frosting on top, bake that shit up. Now, if that's what you're thinking, hold on, (laughs) because let him finish. Let him, I want, he he had a different thing in mind. I love that you thought so highly of me that I would do that. I thought this is what I was like, okay, I could see how that's interesting. You were, it's almost like you were going to make a, Oh no! Why am I like a baklava toaster strudel? And I was like, Oh, that could be. That's probably good. Yeah. No. As you say, it sounds good. Now. Now. Going back to the story. Go ahead and finish and tell them what it actually was. He couldn't have been did. more wrong. Yeah. All I yeah. wanted was way to off get, base. I just wanted to get all you know three, four flavors of toaster strudels. You <laughs> butter a Pyrex. Yep. And you put down you know six toaster strudels icing, six different toaster strudels icing. And you just do that. And then my <laughs> thought was it would bake down into a nice layered cake, a nice layered, yeah. you know, pastry. Uh-huh. And what ended up happening is I finally fucking did it. You put them in frozen too, right? Put them in frozen. Yeah. And I literally <laughs> put a, yeah, it was literally just a bunch of hard toaster strudels <laughs> stacked, just stacked on top of each other. It didn't. <laughs> You could look at it and go, I know what this is going to taste like because I've modified it in no way, shape, or form. God, and in thinking back, I can still picture in my mind what it is I was thinking. It just wasn't. It didn't happen. Did you eat the whole thing? Demolished. <laughs> how, many two st- how, many did you, how many boxes did you Two eat? boxes. It was two 12. Boxes. What and flavors it, did you choose? Was um, it all one flavor? I would, if I, I, I would say I probably did like strawberry, blueberry, like... Apple and brown. Okay. I, it, what it probably was was the brown sugar, cinnamon, and then the apple ones, or it was something in that realm. I mean, I guess if you kind of mix those, that's a nice. It flavor. just you know, it just didn't really turn out how I thought it was going to be. I one put I one time put Oreo minis into a bowl <laughs> and then put milk on the top, thinking it'd be like cereal. Yeah, and it was instantly just mush. Yeah, 
didn't work. It didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. cool like I thought it would be. Yeah. But so that just was, to be clear, though, I was like 13 when I did that. I wasn't in my 30s. It was a good idea, though. Yeah, I mean, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I knew, I knew how they they decompose in milk. Quickly, I don't know. Yeah. quickly. You yeah. were swirling around for longer than five seconds. That wasn't seconds, a good but. idea. All right, well, there we go. Another food hot take from yeah, customer yeah, service. Yeah. But it was, a, yeah, this was a good one. Yeah, it's nice. I think you know, I, I'm I'm interested in what people think about the. It's always the nice chatting with you. Yeah. Regardless about what it's about. Yeah, we can talk about anything. All right. Well, you know the deal. Drop us um, <laughs> drop us more hot takes. Drop us uh, more questions. You want in the we'll Discord? We'll get those. We've got some really cool guests um, coming up. Yeah. Um, that we're excited about. I guess this will come out kind of after some of them come out, but I'm sure we'll have even more people then. We've got we've got really nice like lineup. Yeah. Um, so we're excited. If you've got people you specifically want to hear from or something, let us know. Yeah, we're for sure. down for whatever. So If you have um, a connection to Tim Robinson, yeah, we're still trying up. to get that. Gift card with your name on it. Yep. We want Tim Robinson. We want Sweet Green. We want. Well, I'll do, I'll do ad reads for Sweet Green without them sponsoring if they want. Yeah. I'll, them, I'll throw them some free yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, you don't have to pay us. Yeah. We'll take a free lunch, one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and well, you know what, too? I'll, any local salad place, I'll take that, too. Yeah. I don't really care. It can be Sweet Green. They're the, that's the ultimate to me. But if it was something different, I'm open to that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Smoothie Place. I would take that. Yeah, I know you're not as into that one. That one's more for me. I'll yeah. read that one by myself. Yeah. All right. How? How? When are we? When are we? Uh, what we got? What do we? How do we sign off? How do we? Yeah, how do you want to sign off? Timothy, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> 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 Goodbye. Bye.